Any information that you have uh, that, that you can give us, uh, we'll pass it on. Appreciate it. We have a uh, pilot that had a seizure. A pilot that had a seizure? Yes. Well, guys, in case you haven't figured it out, it's happening again. Or should I say, it's still happening. More issues with pilots in the flight deck while they're flying you and other passengers all over the world. We're going to start breaking some of this stuff down right now. Let's start with Ryanair Flight 3472. It diverted to Krakow, landed safely there. A recent incident involving pilot incapacitation on Ryanair flight London to Rezao, Poland, has highlighted the importance of crew preparedness and emergency protocols. On November 26, 2023, one of the pilots collapsed mid-flight, prompting the plane to divert to Krakow, where it safely landed. Uh, then it continues, passengers and crew members were left in a state of panic as the aircraft quickly descended and initiated an emergency diversion to Krakow. The quick thinking and professionalism of the crew ensured the safety of all on board. Upon landing in Krakow, medical personnel were ready to assist the pilot in need. The pilot's condition remains unknown at this time. Ryanair stated the safety of passengers is always a top priority for airlines. Ryanair, like other reputable carriers, adheres to strict safety procedures and regulations. Incidents like this are rare. Well, they used to be rare but emphasized the importance of having capable and well-trained crew members. Passengers on board the affected flight praised the crew's professionalism and calm demeanor during the incident, etc., etc., etc. Let's move on to incident number two. Keep in mind, this all happened within about a 30-day period, guys. National Post reported passenger takes control of an Air Transat flight after crew member becomes incapacitated. That is not totally true. The passenger was also a pilot. It sounds like he was just deadheading, a.k.a. hitching a ride in the back. Little bit of a clickbaity title, but uh, I didn't write it. Passenger aboard an Air Transat flight took control of the airplane after a crew member became incapacitated. Flight 186, en route from Toronto Pearson to Punta Cana, departed approximately 9.30 a.m. on November 20th and was due to arrive in the Dominican Republic around 2 p.m. Nearly three hours into the flight, a member from the aircraft's flight crew allegedly became incapacitated. One of the 299 passengers on board, who happened to be a company-qualified pilot, stepped in to replace them. Yeah, so there's, there's the clickbait. The TSB did not specify the precise role of the incapacitated individual, a.k.a. whether it was the captain or the first officer. The crew performed a descent towards their destination and ultimately landed safely in the Dominican Republic with no reported injuries, obviously, except for the incapacitated crew member. When such an event occurs, the first thing to do is ensure the aircraft is flying safely. Well, duh. The remaining pilot will immediately become both the flying pilot and the pilot monitoring in an Airbus. A red push button is pressed for about 45 seconds to disengage the incapacitated pilot side stick in the event they have collapsed and put undesired pressures onto it. Obviously, whoever's writing this article thinks they know about Airbus systems, but um, the stick will also algebraically sum differing inputs. So in other words, if one pilot collapses onto the side stick and pushes the stick full right and full down, the aircraft will start to dive and bank to the right. And then the other pilot is going to instinctively correct and pull full back and to the left. So it algebraically sums that back to a neutral stick. Full down, full right, and the other pilot going full back and full left algebraically sums back to neutral and the airplane really won't do anything. And then the flying pilot, like the article says, can hold the red push button down on his side stick and lock out the other pilot from inputting unwanted 
commands on the side stick. Again, it's as though the event is rare, following standard operating procedures is vital to ensure the safety of all those on board. I uh, stand by what I said, the event used to be rare. Emphasis on past tense. Event number three within 30 days. Air India, as reported by the Hindustan Times, Air India pilot dies after showing signs of discomfort during training in Delhi. Anil Kumar, who is in his 30s, appeared to have suffered a <clears throat> hydraulic pump failure. The Air India pilot departed early on Thursday morning after showing signs of discomfort during a training session at the Delhi airport, PTI reported, citing officials. The officials added that Kumar was at a training session at the Operations Department of Air India Terminal 3 of the airport when he suddenly started showing signs of discomfort. He was taken to the place where you go to get better at the airport, but departed early despite efforts to bring him back, the officials said. Notice the code words that I'm using here. And guys, this happened on November 16th, by the way. An unidentified official told the news agency that the airline was extending all possible assistance to the family. His father was also a senior commander at the airline. Another official said Kumar was declared fit when he underwent his medicals in August. All his past medical assessments were fine with no detected underlying medical conditions, the official added. Tap dancing on his chest was provided by Coast staff and immediately shifted to Medanta Center, domestic arrival. Despite receiving chest tap dancing and first aid from a doctor, he remained in a eternally sleepy condition. Later, they declared him gone. He had just underwent his latest medical exam in August and, of course, was declared medically fit to fly, showing no signs or issues or anything. He had just gotten back to duty after a vacation to D Diwali, a Diwali vacation, wherever that is. So yeah, so that there is number three. How about number four in 30 days? American Airlines pilot reportedly has super bad shaking episode aboard the aircraft. I have the audio for this. I'll play that for you guys in a second as well. Pilot who was flying American Airlines Flight 755 from Paris to Philadelphia on November 29th reportedly had a shaking event on board the aircraft. The first officer who was the flying pilot, so again, it was his leg. He was flying the plane from Paris to Philadelphia on November 29th, had a shaking event, obviously while at the controls, stiffening his legs and back, jamming his feet under the rudder pedals on a short final approach. Guys, this is, this is very, very bad because on short final approach, the autopilot is traditionally no longer engaged. He is hand flying the airplane and now he has checked out. In other words, if the captain had not immediately taken over, that plane carrying God knows how many passengers would have crashed in Philadelphia. I don't think many people realize how quickly this could have gone south and killed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people had the captain not reacted as quickly as he did. During the approach, the relief captain was on the flight deck in the jump seat course, like I said, the captain immediately took over the flying duties. There was no loss of aircraft control, thank God. Relief pilot was able to remove the eternally sleepy pilot from the right seat with the help of the purser, aka the lead flight attendant. The relief pilot occupied the seat for a normal landing and taxi into the gate. So there you go. I'm going to play the audio for you guys right now. This is the conversation between American 755 and air traffic control right after the first officer's shaking event. Mark 755, heavy turn right at the high speed left kilo. Romeo, spot number six, contact the ramp and uh, we've let them know. Left turn, Romeo, kilo, we need EMTs at the gate. Roger. 
Any information that you have uh, that, that you can give us, uh, we'll pass it on. Appreciate it. We have a uh, pilot that had a seizure. A pilot that had a seizure? Yes. Ramp, American 755, going to Alpha 23. American 755, Juliet to the gate, Alpha 23. Juliet to the gate. 755, um, Brown, tell me you got medical. Have you let anybody over here know yet? Yeah, we have. Can we do spot five? You want spot five, six? We need. And we're to the gate off a of spot uh, over here, coming on Tango Julia. Yes, come in, come in, spot uh, four. Uh, All right. Can you, um, I guess seven fifty-five. Can you call ops and tell about your medical? I don't think nobody over here knows, so we can call the paramedics. That's right. ATC knows as well. They're uh, informing them as well. All right, copy that. But yeah, just so we can call out, so we can call the paramedics for the information, just to make sure that you have your medical people over there. Operations, American 755. Uh, ops will be on 131.0. So there you go, guys. Still happening. That was four major issues in the last 30 days. If you remember in August, I believe I reported on three airline pilots taking a very early dirt nap all within one week of each other. But this, like these news articles stated, it's a very rare event. So thank God, thank God this never happens and it is a very rare event, folks. I cannot tell you how thankful I am that this is so rare. Feel free to browse through some of my past videos and you will see exactly how extremely, extremely, extremely rare this is. Thanks for watching. I am the pistol packing pilot, and I am out. See ya.